Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is the A tag and B tag. So both of these tags were created by Jim's Books Reading and Stuff. I was tagged to do the A tag by Steve Donahue. Um, he didn't tag me for the B tag, but I thought, what the hell, might as well do it anyway. Um, so I'm going to do two of these tags together at once. Um, and for the A tag, right from the first question, I'm already off to a rough start. Uh, the first question is, um, A is for America. What do you consider the great American novel? Um, now, yes, I am an American, uh, but these kinds of questions give me imposter syndrome on book two here. Um, for many, many years, I didn't read much fiction. Uh, you know, uh, my background is not in literature. <laughs> you know, I took some college uh, English literature classes and American literature classes, and uh, not a lot, though. Um, so when I just kind of did a Google search of great American novels and the contestants, I realized I haven't read most of them. Um, one of the ones that I did read, and that I wouldn't say it's the great American novel, but if we're thinking about a great American novel, we're thinking about something that's good and that has something to say about America. Right, you need two of those things to, to come together in order for it to be the great American novel. So, one of the ones I did read that I would think would kind of fit that is uh, The Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane. Um, you know, it deals with, with the Civil War. Um, of course, what, you know, undoubtedly one of the most important eras and events in American history redefined and reshaped our country in such huge ways. So it deals with that, but it's also about this young soldier who, uh, you know, is going off to war and he's, uh, you know, he's got a lot of um, misunderstandings about what war is like and gets an extremely rude awakening. And I kind of feel like for, you know, the United States, um, which on the world scene is still a relatively new country, you know, or a young country, uh, we had a lot of growing pains as well. And I can definitely see this as a contender. Um, am I saying this is the great American novel? No, uh, definitely not. Um, I'm saying this is one of the ones that I've read and that um, I would recommend other people read. Uh, and I think they can learn a lot about the U.S., uh, the United States experience, the American experience from this. Um, so anyway, that's my answer. Um, I'm going to have another another question that I'm going to do even worse with. Um, next one is A's for ARC. Which character in literature has the most interesting character arc? Uh... I had a tough time with this one. Um, I picked so sort of literature, sort of. Uh, I'm going to go with Odin. Um, you know, the supposed all-father, although it's debatable whether or not that's actually what they called him back uh, in, in the Norse Viking age. Um, but Odin is a... He, he's, he's kind of been turned into this um, paternal protector uh, in a lot of ways. Um, but when The way that he's depicted... Um, these days, whether, whether it's Marvel or whatever it might be. But uh, the real the real depictions of Odin um, are actually far more interesting and far more ambiguous. And he's, in many ways, a terrifying character. Um, when I say about his story arc, you know, he's somebody who, uh, you know, in some myths kind of fashions uh, the human race. Um, but he's somebody who is so desirous of knowledge uh, that he, he takes out his own eye in order to gain new knowledge. He throws himself on a spear. He sacrifices himself to himself by hanging himself on the world tree of Yggdrasil in order to learn uh, the secrets of runes and to learn magic. And he has these two birds, uh, the, the ravens, um, that he sends out um, across the world that report back to him. He's got wolves. He's got a, an eight-legged horse <laughs> asleep near, uh, which can go across realms. Um, and he finds out about... Ragnarok, uh, that he is destined to die. Um, and uh, he he spends most of his days uh, traveling around, sometimes in disguise, sometimes as an old man tricking people, um, tricking humans, uh, sometimes making deals with humans, uh, and often betraying them in the end, because uh, what he's really after is collecting souls. So he is off uh, instigating fights, instigating wars, so that he could then collect the souls of the battle dead so he can bring them to Valhalla, uh, which might not actually be in Asgard. It might, might be somewhere else uh, um, if you look at the, the Norse, Norse religion. Um, you know, it's not exactly a heaven uh, like it's depicted today. Uh, 
And he, he's collecting warrior souls to, to fight in Ragnarok, which he's destined to lose. You know, he is, he is fated to be swallowed by the wolf Fenrir, um, then be avenged by his son. Uh, it, it is just, I, I can go, you know, you, you can keep going with, with Odin, uh, but I just think that it's, it's a fascinating character with a crazy story arc. Um, so anyway, I, I encourage people, uh, if, you, if you don't know the actual like mythologies of Odin, um, really look into it. Uh, the 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 roots of uh, what we kind of get down today or have been very today's depictions of Odin have been very uh, heavily Christianized in a lot of ways a lot of uh, Christian influence in the way that we think of Odin and Loki and everything else um, but yeah that Odin is very interesting to me so that that's my answer at least for this one um, uh, we have A is for Abby it's not a prompt but some of you have asked for more footage of our beagle Abby in these videos uh, and Steve translated that as show your pets even cats so. Here I will insert uh, some video footage of some of my pets. Uh, we do have a cat and three guinea pigs. We also have a dog, but I'll save the dog footage for a little bit later. So I'll put that in here. Here's some of the guinea pigs, the weird sisters. Is there another one about to come out now? Come on, say hi. There she is. All right. And here is Asher, our young cat, about two years old. Asher. Okay, for number four, A is for Austin. What do you plan to read for Jane Austen July? Uh, I might read Mansfield Park. It depends on what other things I have going on for reading uh, in July. I do plan on going away for like a week in July, so we'll see. We'll see exactly what kind of reading time I have, what I'm in the mood for. There are certain things that I want to read before I I head out uh, in July. Um, so I might read Mansfield Park, but one thing that I know that I'm going to get to in July because I've been wanting to get to it for a long time, and it's about time. Uh, and <laughs> that's Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Um, I had read Pride and Prejudice a couple years ago, and then I had immediately picked this up to read it, and I know that it's certainly different in many ways, but I did still feel like I was reading the same book again. And it was just, it was just too close, uh, too close in time to read *Pride and Prejudice* and then read this. Um, even though there are major differences, of course, that I'll be expecting, uh, it was just close enough where I just didn't feel like getting into the same basic story once again. Uh, but enough time has passed; it's been a few years, so it's about time that I get into *Pride and Prejudice* and zombies. Um, and you know, for a uh, this will be, I'm, I'm going to try to read something horror every month. Uh, and this, this will be at least one of my horror picks for that, that month. Um, A is for automobile. What is your favorite literary automobile? Um, I mean, the only real answer to this is the Batmobile. Uh, tons of iterations. Um, all of them pretty awesome. Uh, who, who in their right mind wouldn't want a Batmobile? Um, if you wouldn't, you're not in your right mind. Uh, but for the horror fan in me, um, I have not read the book yet. I have it sitting over there on the shelf. Uh, I do have it, uh, but I will get to it. But I also think of Christine, you know, uh, the Stephen King novel. But, um, of course, since I haven't read the book, I am more familiar with John Carpenter's adaptation, uh, which I do like. I like quite a bit. Um, I'm a big fan of Christine. It's kind of comfort food for me. I usually watch it, um every other year or so uh and this is one over the years that i kept expecting to not like <laughs> um sorry for the glare uh i'm not a car guy and you know i kept thinking you're gonna make a, a movie about a killer car um and i'd seen it no matter how many times i had seen it, i kept going back to expecting to not like it this time and always coming away saying that was fun um and i do still think it's fun uh and just the the scene where um where he tells uh christine after she's been smashed up show me and she does this rebuild, <laughs> rebuild herself, almost like it's a striptease. Um, it's a terrific scene, and John Carpenter uh, has a terrific framing in that. Um, so yeah, th this will kind of be my other, my other answer for a car. Christine. A is for Anonymous. What is your favorite book or poem by, uh, or poem published anonymously? Um, and that will, of course, have to go to Frankenstein. Uh, you know, of course, we know Mary Shelley wrote it, but in 1818, um, she published it anonymously. Uh, this is the Norton Critical Edition, one of them from 1996, but it has the, um, yeah, reproduction of the, 
1818 title page. And even on the other side, we get the other part of it, uh, to William Godwin, right, author of Political Justice, Caleb Williams, etc. And these volumes are respectively inscribed by the author. Um, so that's how it was published first in 1818. Uh, so, you know, this needs no introduction. Um, still a very fascinating book um, with a, a lot to say, even though she was so young when she wrote it. Um, so that's my answer for the anonymous one. Uh, A is for autobiography. What is the last autobi autobiography you read? And that would be just a few months ago when I read um, 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup, the uh, man who was um, captured from the North, stolen, kidnapped, um, and brought down south and put into slavery for, for 12 years, um, as the title suggests. Um, so that's that. A is for audiobooks. Do you consider listening to an audiobook as reading? I mean, if you look in the strictest sense, no. Uh, you're using different parts of your brain, different skills. Uh, one of them is being read to you and making the choices, of course. Um, you know, the, the other one, you create uh, the choices as you're reading. But if somebody tells me, oh, yeah, I read that book, and they listen to an audiobook, I don't bat an eye. Um, <laughs> that's good enough for me. Uh, I, I think that we can split a lot of hairs here. But ultimately, life is short. We're all going to die soon. Um, there's a lot of books to get through. If audiobooks help people get through books, freaking let them <laughs> let let them enjoy them. Um, I I do listen to audiobooks sometimes. I used to listen to them a lot more. Uh, I used to listen to them uh, going to work and coming back all the time. But this past year, my wife and I we work in the same district, and my my school is on the way uh, to hers, so we've been carpooling um, mostly to kind of save on money. Uh, we we've, we've saved over a thousand dollars in gas by doing this, uh, but that means that I'm not alone in a car <laughs> almost ever. Uh, so I don't listen to very many audiobooks these days, um, or at least not as often. Uh, but I have, this summer I'll probably listen to them again, and, um, you know, I think I'm probably going to start taking morning walks once the summer starts, and, you know, I have an audiobook going, uh, and, you know, hopefully I'll remember to make the distinction in <laughs> my booktube videos, uh, if I listen to it or if I read it, but I don't, it's not big enough of a difference to me for me to really give a crap. <laughs> so, um... You know, yes, I'm, I'm totally for audiobooks. And I also say they serve a real purpose. Um, you know, when Jane Austen July came up, right, and when I first read Pride and Prejudice, I'm going to hold up not Pride and Prejudice uh, while I talk about this, um, but, you know, I wasn't used to Regents, Regency era language and writing. Uh, what I did was I found um, free audiobooks on, I think, LibriVox, and... I started reading the books along with the audiobook. So I would put the audiobook, audiobook on and I would read along for it for a while. And after a while, I was able to kind of get the language better. And I didn't need the audiobook after a while. Uh, but I do think that, you know, if, if you're not used to a certain kind of type of writing language, if it's an older book, I do think that audiobooks are very useful in that way and helping guide you through them. Um, so yeah, I, I am 100% a promoter and fan of audiobooks. Uh, and if, if something is really complicated and I want to go through it slowly, I won't do an audiobook for that at all. But if it's something fun that I can just kind of listen to and walk around and, uh, or else, you know, wash dishes or whatever, yeah, uh, there's a lot worse things I can be listening to. So, um, yes, for audiobooks. Is it reading? Technically, no, but I also don't care. Um, moving on to the B tag. B is for Buildings Roman. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, do you have a favorite Buildings Roman or coming of age story? I don't know if I have a favorite. Uh, one of the ones that I decided to choose for this, though, is um, The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. Uh, post apocalyptic zombie novel uh, about a girl who, um, who was different. And. Um, She's in a world that she doesn't really understand and begins to really understand that world and her place in it. Uh, and I do actually really like this book, and I enjoyed the movie, too, that was uh, made about it. Um, so, yeah, this would be my coming-of-age story, The Girl with All the Gifts. And I realize... Sorry, I kind of paused there when I was picking up that book because I realized I forgot a prompt. I must have skipped it. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I skipped prompt three for the A tag. So let me do that quick, because it's not going to be long. And A is for Australia. What was the last book you read by an Australian author? 
I can't answer that yet because come to find out as I look through my library, I don't think I've read anything by an Australian author yet. <laughs> but I have one on my TBR. Um, the Power of One, uh, a classic novel of South Africa, but I believe that Bryce Courtenay, is it Courtenay? Maybe? Uh, is um, at least part Australian. He might be Australian slash South African. I don't know exactly. But I do believe that uh, he is at least <laughs> partly Australian in his nationality. I do think that um, Mark over at Book Time with Elvis put this in like his top 20 books. Uh, so I do look forward to this one. Um, it's been sitting on my TRS shelf for a long time. Um, and I will get to it eventually. Uh, so one of these days I will read an Australian author. I do watch a lot of Australian horror films. Um, so I'm not totally ignorant of that country's artistic output. <laughs> and yes, horror films are artistic output. Uh, but I just haven't haven't come across a lot of Australian books. Um, so anyway, okay, let's go back to the B tag. Number two, B is for beach. Uh, what would you like, uh, sorry, what would you recommend, can't read, uh, for a beach read? Um, I mean, I don't read at the beach. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm portly and bearded. Uh, I don't like being hot. I don't like sand everywhere. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, I'm assuming we're talking, uh, like ocean beach. And I do love going to the ocean, uh, but I don't like sitting there. I don't like sitting in the sand. I like walking around. I like just kind of like wading knee deep in the water. Um, Steve Donahue on his, uh, on his, uh, answers talk about tide pools. That's the sort of thing that I like. Um, I just like going around and looking at the things that wash up, uh, trying to find crabs and stuff like that. Um, and I like being near the ocean. I love hearing the ocean. Uh, when my wife was pregnant with our, with our first child, our son, we went down to, to Myrtle Beach, um, for, you know, almost, almost a week. And we got a great hotel room, uh, right along the ocean. And every night we would have the slider open. We had a, like a balcony and, um, we would just listen to the ocean every single night, you know, and it was just such a wonderful way to fall asleep. So I love being at the ocean, but I'm not somebody who sits there for long periods of time. And even if I did, I got two small kids. I got to make sure they don't get taken away to riptide. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't get to sit around and, and read. Um, but if I did, uh, it would probably be something light. Um, Star Trek novels are my version of a light read, or it would be something like ecological. Um, I'd rather read like maybe a popular science book or something like that about uh, what I'm seeing um, so I can have more appreciation of the setting. So that would be my idea of a, of a good beach read. I can't recommend that to everybody else, but uh, that's where I stand with that. Um, we got bees for Beagle, show me your dog. So at this point, I will insert footage of my dog. And this here is Shelby. Uh, she's 13 years old. She was our our first child, right? She's got her Star Trek collar on, and uh, you can see her her regal portrait in the back. But here's Shelby, she's still very healthy, a little bit of cataracts, but otherwise runs around, jumps, and very healthy dog. Okay, uh, next prompt. B is for best. What is the best book you have read this year so far? Um, I mean, actually the the difference between best and favorite, I don't know. Um, this is probably one of the best ones, right? Musashi by E.G. Ishikawa. Uh, just you know, about a thousand page epic of uh, of the, the samurai of Musashi, um, originally published in Japanese in the um, 1930s. Uh, this English edition is abridged, but this is maybe the best, although I did really enjoy reading the Norse stuff from this year. Um, including, still got one over here on the desk, like, uh, just really short, The Wanderer's Havamal, um, translated by, uh, Jackson Crawford, uh, even Njal's Saga for Saga Long. I mean, th those are probably some of the most enjoyable things that I've read this year. Um, B is for bookshop or bookstore. Do you have a favorite bookstore? So, yeah, my favorite bookstore would be The Book Barn in Niantic, Connecticut. Uh, I had posted a a video um, about a month or so ago uh, when we we stopped there. Um, just a wonderful used bookstore. I mean, stores. There, there's multiple locations along the uh, the main strip in Niantic, a uh, very small little seaside town. And um, yeah, I, I love going there. But I mean, other than that, I love any bookstore. But I can't wait to get back into library book sales. 
Um, I think that we're probably going to start having them again this year, uh, and I'm really excited about that. I just love going through oceans of cheap books and uh, and digging. Um, we, we love that, and especially in this part of the state, um, it's always just beautiful back road drives to get there. So we get a nice drive in as a family. We come back with just, you know, bags or pans full of books and the kids are just in the back seat reading, you know, the, the whole drive home. Um, so yeah, th those are my, my favorite book shopping experiences. <clears throat> Five B is for banned books. Is there any book you think should be banned? No, I don't believe in banning books. Six, B is for Bible. What is your favorite book of the Bible, and what trigger warnings do you think it should have? Uh, I mean, Revelations has certainly inspired some uh, some good horror <laughs> uh, horror films. Um, yeah, I do like The Omen. Uh, I guess my favorite one would be Genesis. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything. It's it's kind of the, you know, it really is the cream of the crop here. You got Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah, the Tower of Babel, uh, Isaac and Abraham, um, and... Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, I mean, it, you can't beat that. And trigger warnings, I don't, I'm not a proponent of trigger warnings. I said I am a horror fan. Uh, I, you know, uh, I, I expect to be um, challenged and shocked and maybe even, you know, uh, assaulted <laughs> when, when I'm, when I'm watching a film and sometimes reading a book. Uh, but I mean, if nobody has read Nobody has read Genesis before. Uh, there's a lot of incest, <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of adult children, uh, you know, uh, sexually assaulting their their parents. Um, whether you know there, there's some maybe Ham did something with Noah. You got Lot and his daughters. Uh, you know, yeah. Even the horror stuff I read doesn't doesn't go there. Um, so yeah, if if you haven't read the Bible, you're in for a shock. Uh, Seven. B is for a bookshelf. Uh, show me your bookshelf or bookshelves. Okay, so here I will insert some footage of my bookshelves. Okay, so here are some of my bookshelves. Uh, this bookcase has um, science and some nonfiction. Uh, got some some memoirs down there. Uh, if we go over here, um, we have got uh, just some religious studies. My wife's math books. Uh, math phobic for the most part, uh, some other general nonfiction, and some oversized books on the bottom. Uh, this bookcase is, uh, we have some stuff of Eastern history, and here is medieval and ancient. And then we have mostly American history over here. Uh, you see I'm still filling some things out. Uh, here we have uh, some Star Trek, uh, some Dungeons and Dragons, some antique books, and if my way over here, we have some uh, some drama, um, some books about writing, um, and here are some Stephen King books I need to to get to. Here is uh, some of the fiction shelves, and this is my horror studies cabinet. Uh, you can see, Let me open it up for you here. There's Edgar. <laughs> uh, just have some some horror, a little bit of geek stuff up here. Got horror studies, mostly film studies, but also literary studies over on this shelf. A little bit there. And then I have some horror fiction down here towards the bottom. And I also do have a lot of books upstairs, but the rooms are messy, so I'm not going to show them to you. And finally, we're on the last prompt. B is for Brazil. Uh, Paulo Coelho's, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. The Alchemist has been translated into 70 languages. Have you read any of his stuff? Uh, and what do you think of his books? I actually, when I was substitute teaching uh, at a high school, um, it, we're talking probably about 15 years ago, uh, I long-term, it, it was a little over a week, uh, I subbed for an English teacher, and um, they had a copy right on their desk. Uh, so I was thumbing through it, and I was reading through it, and, you know, my, my period's off. And um, I think, I don't, I don't think I ever finished it. It, it really wasn't grabbing me. Um, I don't remember, um, I don't remember liking it all that much for whatever I was reading. I'm not sure if I finished it. Uh, I might not have, but I never got the urge to go back. So 
again, it's probably been about 15 years, uh, so take that for what it is. That's my only experience with that author. And that is it. Okay, so that is the A tag and the B tag. Um, so, you know, thank you, Jim's Books Reading and Stuff for creating it, and thanks to Steve Donahue for tagging me for the A tag. And um, that's it, all right? Thank you, BookTube.